What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name's Gym Leader Geo, and this is The Locker Room, week five of the fifth season of the GBA, as we go over the team building prep and the mons I end up bringing for my matchup against the Borussia Don fan this week and their coach, Lars. Lars is a great guy, good friend, and uh, he's 3 and one conference rival, division rival. He's 3 and one Really good battler. Uh, he's only lost to Dan this season. I also lost to Dan this season. Dan's doing great too. I'm 2-2 two and two at the moment, coming off two big wins. Uh, thank you guys so much for the support in last week's video and for uh, all your votes for me for Play of the Week. And uh, I'm just really flattered that I won that last season. I, I didn't do so great, so I didn't really get on that that much. So it's nice that, that I'm there now. I'm really I'm really flattered and touched by, by your guys' support from last week on the channel. So thank you guys so much. Uh, moving forward, Looking at the Borussia Don fan, we got another hard one this week, guys. The Don fan has got a really great team, coached by Lars. If you guys haven't checked out Lars, you really ought to. He's a very talented battler. He's got a really strong team this week, and uh, just this week in general, this season. And uh, you know, he and I two of the smaller channels, and uh, you so you should go give him some love. In fact, we have a bet going on right now for who ends the season with fewer subs. And uh, it's kind of battle for the smallest here, because we're two of the smaller YouTube channels on the on the GBA. And uh, yeah, whoever has fewer subs at the end of the season is the winner. So I highly recommend go check out Lars. Go give him a sub. For, don't even forget me. Drop your sub to me. Give it to to Lars <laughs> at the end of the at the end of the season. I'll I'll win the bet, and then uh, there'll be some fun. We'll do a stream together and there'll be fun, some fun shenanigans that he has to embarrass himself with there. So, so looking forward to that, buddy. Uh, let's look into the team that we're bringing this week. It's going to be a very conceptually based team. That's how I'll talk about it at first and I'll kind of go over the specifics a little more before that. Uh, the reason I'm highlighting Remix here, as you can see, yeah, Trip the Amoongus, Zoolander the Vaporeon, Nato Nato the Hippowdon, Cuddles the Pinsir, Decisions the Entei, and Remix the Ditto. I'm going to start with number 6. Ditto is the last mod added to my team, even though in in concept, in my mind, he was probably the most important. And the reason for that is, originally this spot was going to go to Latias. The reason I didn't give it to Latias is I don't think I need Defog this week. Uh, the reason is he doesn't have great Stealth Rock opportunities. Drudagon and Landorus, essentially his only two. And... I don't know, I, I'm i not going to really be putting them on my side of the field because I know he has that Mega Absol and I'm not going to go for Stealth Rocks until that Mega Absol is dead or not in and not Mega Evolved yet. Then I might be able to pull them off. But for that reason, I'm not too worried about Hazards on my side of the field and Remix is uh, a really good counter to the potential for setup on his team and I mean, just look at his team, guys. Like, He's got Rock Polish potential on the Landorus. He's got Belly Drum potential on the Azumarill. He could be a Nasty Bat, uh, Nasty Plot Crobat. He could be Swords Dance on the Cabalion. He could be Calm Mind on the Delphox. He could, I mean, Slowking, don't even get me started. That thing could be Amnesia Slowking. It could be Iron Defense Slowking. Scallopede's a passer. Swords Dance on the Mega Absol. He's got a lot of setup opportunity, and a lot of those are very common sets. So it wouldn't surprise me if he's got some of those. Remix can come in and really take advantage of that. He's my my primary check to to answering that kind of uh, that kind of team prep if that's what he wants to bring. So Remix is kind of to take over that side of things if that's the direction Lars wants to go with with this battle. Uh, the other Pokemon I brought are specifically designed for sets that would give me trouble otherwise, and then everything else I kind of wing from there. So that's where the conceptual versus specific kind of comes in. Looking at his team, if I had to predict his 6, it's really hard to do for his team. But I started checking off some Mon, like Tangrowth is not going to be coming. My two primary sweepers both hit it super effective with their stab. And it just cannot take on decisions or cuddles. So I'm not too worried about, the Tangrowth's not going to be coming. I don't think Scallopede's going to come because I think he knows that Ditto is a threat. So I don't see Scallopede coming. The 6 Mon that I predict, I predict Landorus is coming. Uh, because he's brought it every week and it's really potent. I predict the Azumarill is coming. Very strong Mon. Uh, I predict the the Mega Absol is coming, and I think those will be his primary offensive core. Then the next three come. Uh, 
it depends how he wants to go with the game, hence the conceptual versus reality discussions in the team building here. Crobat is actually a pretty good, it could be a wall breaker Crobat or it could be like a support Crobat. Um, it really depends, I'm not sure, but Crobat does pretty well against some of the members of my team. Um, it's a good switch into things like Trip because of course it resists both, uh, both of my stab there. Uh, I think it's a pretty good mon overall. Whether or not he actually ends up bringing it, I'm not sure. That would be a more offensive and momentum-based team if he brings Crobat. He could bring the Cabalion. Uh, it can survive two hit KOs from some of the attacks from Cuddles and Decisions, and it can outspeed both of them. Uh, it resists both of their priorities. So it could, and it can pack rock, which hits both of them super effective. So that's a potential. Del Fox, I, he could bring it. I don't really see him bringing Del Fox. One of the reasons is that Zoolander kind of is outright a wall for it with the set I'm bringing. If he opts to run Power Herb Solar Beam, then he's not going to have an offensive item, and Zoolander can survive the two-hit KO potential there. He won't be able to two-hit KO. If it's Grass Knot, if it's, you know, Zoolander is very lightweight, so Grass Knot's not going to be doing very much to me, even if it's Specs. And if it is Specs, I'll be able to see that damage, and then Trip is a switch in for days. Slow King. Slow King's a very potential... Like, if he brings Slow King, he's bringing a physically defensive Slow King to try and take on Decisions and Cuddles, and he can do that relatively well. They both fail to two-hit KO if he's fully defensive. Um, but there is potential for setup there, so I'm not sure. Like I could maybe Swords Dance on his face with Cuddles. I'm not sure yet, uh, but I think that's a that's a pretty good mod that he could bring. Scolopede, I don't see him bring. Drudagon is also a very good answer to Decisions. A little bit less of a good answer to Cuddles, but he could bring it just to try and whittle them a little bit. Uh, with Rocky Helmet and Rough Skin, he could really be doing a lot to them both. But they're both packing moves that don't make contact, so I could still be hitting it pretty hard with those mods without actually taking any Rough Skin Rocky Helmet damage from it. Uh, it is a potential rocker, so that could be a reason he would bring that. Mega Absol, I see him bringing. Luxray is also a potential, because with the Intimidate, he can uh, he can drop Cuddles down to minus one, and then Cuddles won't be able to one-hit KO it with his set. And same thing with Decisions, won't be able to one-hit KO. Um, part of what I was doing in my calculations, I realized a potential set for that Luxray, if he does end up bringing it, would be Intimidate and then Choice Scarf, because that would allow him to outspeed both Cuddles and Decisions, and um, and then hit them pretty hard. I mean, like, Luxray is weird, because it can be special or physical. Um, it, it usually only runs physical if it's Guts. And if it's running Intimidate, a lot of the time, I mean, just more often than not, I see special Luxray because you want Volt Switch to actually be doing something. So it could be either. It's got relatively decent uh, stats in both regards, but it is a potential answer to. Realistically, gun to my head, I have to pick six. I'm saying Landorus, Azumarill, Crobat, Slow King, Mega Absol, and Drudagon. Uh, that would be that would be my prediction of the of the six mons that he bring. And so I kind of had that in mind a little bit, um, but the last three is something you have to play around day of. I'm not really preparing my team specifically for them. So let's go over each Pokemon individually here. I don't want this to be too long. Trip is my primary answer to Azumarill. Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Foul Play, Hidden Power, Ice with Assault Vest. I know you're thinking if it's supposed to be countering a physical mon, why wouldn't you run Rocky Helmet or Black Sludge? The reason is that he's also my secondary answer to Landorus. Landorus is unable to two-hit KO him with uh, any of his special moves, even Earth Power if it's Life Orbed. Um, with the set I'm bringing with the max defense, max HP, it's it's to play around the Azumarill. If the Azumarill is banded, it can't two-hit KO me with this set, and I can absolutely wreck shop with Giga Drain and Sludge Bomb on it. If it packs Ice Punch, I will know immediately if it's banded. It will not two-hit KO me unless he's banded. If he is banded, I know he's locked into it, and then Zoolander can switch in on that banded Ice Punch for days. Um, as you can see here, I have the max HP, max defense relaxed investment on trip. I also have a mixed defensive Zoolander who is running Calm 76 special defense, 180 defense. Um, I wanted to find a balance here that made it that Zoolander survives any potential to hit KO from Landorus. Landorus, um, 
I anticipate the beauty of Landorus is that even though he has something for almost everyone on my team, he has four move slot syndrome. So a special Landorus cannot break a Blissey. So I think he's going to be bringing superpower. I think he brings earth power because it says stab and it hits a good amount of my team, either neutrally or super effectively. I think he brings Fernado Nado, Grass Knot. And then his last move is probably uh, a utility style move like knockoff or maybe U-turn. It depends. Both those hit Latias super effectively, who's also a pretty good switch into him outside of that. So that's what I predict from the Landorus. For that reason, I'm uh, EV'd in a way that he can't two-hit KO me, regardless of any of those things. So these two Pokemon together in tandem uh, kind of shut down his number one and two picks in the Landorus and Azumarill, and I can scout out their kind of sets based on the numbers that I see them putting out. Nado Nado is kind of my physically staple crux here that I'm kind of developing uh, a lot of my ancestors' team around. Obviously, I can't uh, survive much from his Landorus or his Azumarill. However, Crobat uh, could be banded to be kind of a little bit of a wall breaker. It does a lot to trip in Zoolander, and it does a decent amount to Nado Nado, but um, I can I can switch into that for days, so it's it's a safe switch there. It's a safe switch, not a great switch because as you can see with this set, I'm bringing Earthquake, Superpower, Stealth, Rock, and Slack off. No Rock Slide or Stone Edge for that Crobat, um, so I really can't hit it with much. That said, you know I could set up rocks on it if the Mega Absol isn't Mega Evolved yet. Nado Nado is also probably going to be my like looking at the team potential matchup here. I want to lead with Nado Nado because if if he leads with Mega Absol, then I can hit it with a super-powered Oko it on turn 1 if he wants to stay in. If he doesn't stay in, then I'm free to Stealth Rock next turn if I want to. Uh, if he leads with other potential leads, um, Scouters and U-Turners like uh, Landorus or Crobat could both do it. I can take on a, a U-Turn from a Crobat. I could choose to predict the Landorus if I wanted to and go straight for the Stealth Rock there. I could Stealth Rock against both of them. Uh, Skullipede also a potential lead option, however, if, if I see Skullipede, I'm probably leading with Ditto. Just to kind of learn the set a little bit more, and then Nado Nado could be a safe switch in after that if I need him to. So, that's kind of the Nado Nado set here. I realized I didn't go over the attacking moves on Zoolander. I went Scald, Heal Bell, Wish, Protect. I know you might be thinking, why not Ice Beam if I'm supposed to be countering Landorus? The reason is that, one, he could be Yachi Berry. Um, obviously... Anyone could be Yachi Bear, so why don't you? Why do you never bring Ice Beam? So I'm not thinking it that way. The thing is, if I go for a Scald instead of trying to kind of like keep healthy against it, it's going to do about 70%, and that'll put him in um, priority range from either of my two offensive Mon. So I'm okay with not being able to outright Oko it, but I don't think he'll stay in against the Zoolander after he's seen those kind of numbers. So. Heal Bell is there in case he tries to get up any Thunder Wave shenanigans or Toxics, Zoolander, anything like that. Wish Protect, of course, my reliable recovery and my ability to pass on. Sorry if I sound super tired, guys. I, <laughs> it's like 8.15 in the morning and uh, I gotta battle Lars really soon. Of course, um, it's from Germany and 8 hour time difference and we kinda... I've worked all week so I've been putting this off a little bit because it's really hard to find a time that when there's that big time difference that we play together. So it's Saturday, I'm playing him uh, in... I should text him and tell him I just woke up or something. I'll, I'll figure that out later. I need to make my bed too, guys. Oh, I'm all over the place. I look sleepy. I need to put on my face and stuff. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. Let's move on. Cuddles is running Return, Quick Attack, Earthquake, Swords, Dance. Uh, return and Quick Attack, kind of, kind of standard. Uh, primary stab that uh, isn't thrash and gonna lock me in. Quick attack to get that really powerful priority, out prioritize some of his mon, hit them super hard. I click return and pretty much return a quick attack in pretty much any situation, uh, barring pretty much the Luxray, which is why I'm packing Earthquake. Um, I know I could pack close combat there for the Cabalion, but I don't want to be dealing with the um, defense drops. And it only hits him for slightly more. Return is a two-hit KO anyway, barring a fully defensive set. If he's a fully defensive set, I'm not that scared of him anyway. I could maybe Swords Dance on him. So uh, Swords Dance is just there uh, to potentially get a setup. There are some situations where I could predict the switch and, and maybe get a setup on that. 
Uh, Drudagon, for example, can't do a whole heck of a lot to Pinsir, so I could Swords Dance on it and then Oko it the next turn. So that is my Cuddle set. Max speed because um, I want to outspeed the fastest Mon on his team that I am capable of doing that for. Uh, Delphox is a 104 speed, so I want to be able to outspeed a Timid, one of, a timid Max Invested, Delphox potentially. Uh, Delphox could run Choice Scarf. Uh, I know that Luxray can too. I'm going to have to scout for that if he brings the Luxray. I really don't think he'll bring Luxray, but if he does, then pardon me. I, I have to kind of scout for that. We have decisions next, guys. Uh, he's back to kind of a more standard set. I'm not going to double up on the on the crazy Sunny Day set. We'll just let that live in uh, in infamy. I love it. <laughs> uh, choice Band, Sacred Fire, Stone Edge, Extreme Speed, and Toxic. Fourth move. It could be kind of anything at all, really. Um, I was considering Flare Blitz because it hits harder than Sacred Fire if I don't really need to worry about the burn. But a majority of the time, I want to try and get that burn with the Sacred Fire. Stone Edge is, of course, the move that you go for if a Pokemon ever resists or otherwise doesn't care about the burn or something like that. Stone Edge can hit it pretty hard. It's a, Pretty much it's only ever used against, I think, Azumarill, Crobat, and Slowking, I think. Yeah, uh, or if I don't want to take Rocky Helmet damage from the Drudicon. Other than that, Sacred Fire is usually my best bet. Extreme Speed to help me clean up uh, with some powerful priority. Toxic is there because if I... I really didn't know with the last move. I was considering Flare Blitz, but there's not many situations I would go for it. There's also not many situations I'd go for Toxic. But if, say, his only Entei answer is Slow King, that's the only thing he has, then I'd love to hit that thing with the Toxic. So, uh, that's the thought process there. I wouldn't even mind burning it, because Slow King is kind of an in-and-out type of Mon, because uh, of the Regenerator. So, one tick of burn versus a really small tick of Toxic it takes like three turns before it's hitting the same amount. So, anyway, so there's that. And then Remix, as I mentioned before, to kind of counter any of the setup, it's also a pretty good switch into Landorus. Uh, depending on the set. So that is my team of six this week, guys. As you can see, we have them in their, in their beautiful glory here on the DS already gen for me. Return, Quick Attack, Earthquake, Swords Dance, Pincer, Giga Drain, Sludge Bomb, Hidden Power, Foul Play on the Amoongus, Nado Nado, Remix Decisions, and Zoolander. I kind of rushed through the end there because uh, I need to get ready. I need to get ready for this battle. It's almost 8.30. Oh, boy. I got to rush. I got to make my bed again. <laughs> I gotta do some stuff. Uh, definitely check out the battle will be going up tomorrow on Sunday, guys. Uh, we can't wait to see you there. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.